All right, it's time for another mail video. This one is going to be a little bit smaller than my usual ones. There just hasn't been as much mail this time. And uh, I kind of need to get it done because of a time constraint with having this stuff sitting around. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this done now. It's not going to be as big or as long as usual. But before we get into opening the mail, I wanted to give a quick little channel update. Um, I'm going to be at LTX 2019. I'm going to be setting up a booth demonstrating vintage computers and probably probably bringing a few older game consoles to set up for them as well. But yeah, it should be a lot of fun. So if you're going to be uh, there, stop by and check it out. I think it's uh, it might be too late to buy tickets. I'm not sure. They've been selling them in waves, and I have no idea if they're sold out completely or not. So if you do want to go still, then you might want to watch and see what the availability is. All right, I'm going to start with this one, um, even though this isn't the one I actually want to do first. This is immense, and I kind of need it to go somewhere. So uh, this was sent from Bill in Minnesota. All right, so what is this? Well, if you know your hardware, you'll know that this is a plotter, but more specifically, it's a bit interesting. If we look up here, we can see that it says it's from Manufacturing Data Systems Incorporated, but not quite. Looking on the back doesn't reveal much more other than we can see that it is multi-voltage and uses a serial interface with a easily selectable baud rate. And Wow, those are some low baud rates going down to 75. Man, uh, it's really nice. The configurations are labeled here, so I wouldn't need to try and look it up to figure that out. But there is one more place we can look for information. On the bottom, we can finally see this. Model 7221A by Hewlett Packard. This is a modified or upgraded, depending on your outlook, version of an HP 9872A plotter. Now, there are some interesting distinctions, but this one is meant to be connected to a mainframe over a terminal connection to batch process plotting jobs. The HP 9872 was designed to be connected to a desktop computer and communicated with directly using HPGL, HP's own graphics language for plotter communication. Now, even though HPGL is HP's own language for communicating with plotters, it wasn't always natively supported by their computers. My HP 86 needs an updated HP plotter ROM specifically to communicate with HPGL plotters. However, as I mentioned, this isn't an HPGL plotter. HPGL was slow, so when HP was designing a mainframe connecting plotter, they devised a new binary formatted language that was much quicker than HPGL's human language-like syntax. So this is a much faster plotter only because of the protocol. Both this and the HPGL version of this plotter can actually move at the same speeds, but the HPGL language handicapped this plotter so much that it couldn't operate at full speed. So the only way to use one of these at full speed is to use this plotter. However, there is a problem with this faster language. It is not supported by anything. I can't find any records of commercial software that this can be used with. There are only two examples that I can find of anything that can work with this. One is an HP Fortran library that you can use to write your own software, and the other is a research paper that just said they used one of these to make their charts. So I'm not sure if I'm ever going to be able to make this do anything uh, because I can't find manuals of any kind describing how to communicate with this. And I can't find any records or example programs to try and sniff packets from. So this could be kind of difficult to breathe some life into. Now this does have manual controls, but I didn't get it with any pens and they'd probably be dry if it did anyway. But also I need to give this thing a... Uh, full teardown and cleaning because it just, it needs some help. Um, I was even advised how the original belt winding goes. Uh, that's what this paper is for. So when I take it apart, I can see if it's been damaged in shipping or anything like that. But yeah, this is going to be a long time work in progress um, until I can finally make it do something. But I'm really hoping I can because it's so cool. Thank you for sending this, Bill. I'm really hoping I can get something to happen with this. I'm going to start looking around to see if anyone has any documents or example programs for one of these, because I think those are going to be my best hope for getting this working. Elsewise, I'm not sure where to start. Now, this next package I need to profusely apologize for. This was shipped in December from the last mail video, and I forgot to open it. 
So my sincerest apologies. Um, this was sent by Piper in Brazos Valley, Texas. Again, thank you for sending these in. I hadn't even really thought about Ubuntu being on physical media, so it's cool to see those in there too. And I again apologize for how long it took me to get to your package. I really do appreciate it. It's really cool getting all of these in. I couldn't help myself. That was too much fun. This next package comes from Mushroom Samba in Freemansburg, Pennsylvania. It's another 70s calculator with a really nice padded case. This is definitely what has kept this nice for so long because this thing is in really good condition. This one is obviously made by Sears and it is a model 72858821. Yeah, that's a, that's a mouthful. It's actually printed on the back here. Yeah, it doesn't have a real model number. It has its Sears catalog number. <laughs> so that's why that's so strange. But it is fully 70s calculator with the seven segment LEDs. Oh, it's just, these are gorgeous. Oh, I love these things so much. It's fully functional. Yeah, this is, this is cool. I'm building up quite the collection of 70s calculators at this point. Eventually, I'm just going to have to do a video where I show them all off together because there's some cool ones. You don't see them all on videos because some of them I just buy at thrift stores. So, yeah, this is a really, really cool thing to send. Thank you for that. The next package comes from Monotech in Palmerston North, New Zealand. All right, this was the package that actually kind of prompted the earlier uh, creation of this video because I'm a little unsure between w how I'm supposed to do reviews on this stuff because uh, Monotech is the person or company who sent in the XTIDE I did a video on, and that was a bit more with the context that I was going to make a video about it. This stuff there wasn't as much of an agreement with, but I feel like I should get to them sooner than later. So we're gonna go ahead and do this. Um, I'm gonna go through these one at a time to talk about them because they're all pretty cool in their own regard. So uh, first up is something I'm really excited to see. This is a mini XT IDE. So this takes just a compact flash card and uses that in 8-bit ISA mode to function as an IDE hard drive. Now, uh, the car, uh, computers do still need the BIOS option ROM to boot from IDE, so it needs this. But other than that, there really doesn't need to be a lot of supporting circuitry here because the compact flash card can run in IDE mode. Now, this is especially nice to me because, uh, as I showed in the uh, video I did about the XT-IDE, I actually removed the, um, the plane, the back plane from it, and installed it alongside my Tecmar Captain. Actually, I may have shown that in the Tecmar Captain video now that I think about it. And I was wanting a much smaller one like this because it wouldn't interfere with the cabled panel connector as much. And this is perfect. So I'm really looking forward to putting this in my 5150 alongside the Tacmar Captain. That's going to be really nice. Uh, thank you for sending that in. Actually, just I'm going to go ahead and say thank you for sending in all of this stuff right off the bat because there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. All right. Next, I'll take a look at some a little smaller. This, if I remember correctly, is PS2 to XT, not AT. That's a really nice adapter. I don't think uh, these are being made anymore because they were difficult and or not cost effective, um, or they're being uh, redesigned into something smaller. So you may not be able to get these. You should be able to order everything else that I'm showing here though. So uh, I'm gonna link in the description to this stuff if there's something that you uh, are interested in here that you see. All right. Um, I can't remember, I think this goes to this, which is a video converter for ISA cards that output MDA, CGA, EGA to VGA. Now, these have been going around for a little while now. This, this is really awesome. Uh, this is going to be 
super helpful. Now I'll be able to do video capture of uh, 5150 and some of the older stuff because it can be converted to VGA. Now I believe this cable was needed. This is a uh, straight through cable, not a null modem cable. Um, if I have this right, <laughs> um, but this is really nice. Um, if I remember correctly, this also has, yes, uh, switches here instead of the really difficult to use, uh, uh, switches like a 5150 motherboard has, uh, that are the older 80 switches, um, for changing the color. So that's a lot better. Uh, there were also a couple other things that this is, this is a really nicely laid out one in general. Um, and if I remember correctly, this also has an updated firmware that adds a couple more features. I can't remember what exactly that is, but you can check in the description. I'll put more information there, but I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, <laughs> that's going to be really nice. All right, next up is something a little simpler. This is a diagnostic ROM for the 5150. This is going to be useful um, for uh, just determining what's gone bad in some of them. Uh, I think I have one that might have a problem. I'm not sure, but this is definitely going to be useful just in general. I th think this is likely to work on other computers like clones as well. So it's just really useful. And lastly, this is, uh, this is really cool. These have been around for a little while, I think. Um, and this is Monotech's version of it. This is an Adlib clone card. Now you can order this assembled or not assembled. I obviously opted for unassembled because I'm going to enjoy putting this thing together. Um, this is just so cool that you can still get enough parts to make these. Matter of fact, I'm curious, uh, what the date code is on the Yamaha chip. 9344 there are so many of these out there that you can still get original stock now eventually these will dry up um but for now we might as well make them into ad lib cards now just glancing at this pcb i can already tell you i quite like it um the nice rounded corners and proper v score on the connector there for the isa slot this is a nice board this is this is going to make a really nice ad lib card so yeah, a big thank you for sending this and everything else. This is, there's a lot of cool stuff here that I'm looking forward to checking out. And the final package for today comes from Jed in San Francisco, California. Jed, absolutely no problem with the shipping delay. I know it can take a while to get things sent out and... It usually takes me a while to get to filming them anyway, so that's perfectly fine, and thank you for sending this in. This is a Kodak DC-40, and if I remember correctly, this is credited with being one of, if not the first, digital cameras. So this is a really cool find, although it's actually not this one that's known for that. It's the rebranded version of this known as the Apple Quick Take. So this is the uh, original one, <laughs> not the one that you'd actually know. So oh, there we can see through the viewfinder and go ahead and close that. Yep. So, yep. Uh, unfortunately, not getting the serial cable means that it's going to be a little difficult to use. So I'll have to try and figure out what the pinout is and see if I can make my own cable. But yes, this is definitely a cool find. I might even be able to just find the cable online. I don't know. But yep, I'm going to try and get this working because this would be really fun to have on hand. All right, well, that's all of the mail I was sent. Thank you again to everyone who sent something in. I'm extremely appreciative of it. it it's really awesome that people want to send me stuff. I'm so glad that I make videos that people actually like. Uh, so yes, thank you. Um... I hope I can get to these at some point, all the mail. I know I have the habit of just accepting the mail and not necessarily getting to it, but I try. Um, it's just I kind of do videos of what feels fun at the time. It, sometimes when I try and force myself into a video, I just I get stuck in a rut, and then the videos are a drag. So I, I do enjoy all of these things. I'll just have to get to them when it feels right. So... For now, that's it, though. If you guys want to support the channel, I am on Patreon. But for now, I'll see you next time.